Hello everyone and welcome back to part 5 of our time-lapse build in Space Engineers. This is actually all of the old footage. This is the last of the old stuff that I have um, that we had laying around before my computer went complete derp and then Space Engineers went derpy derp. So yeah, this, this, is, this is a completely different kind of idea I had in mind for when we went forward with this. The original plan for this was kind of to be a large hauler, something that we could have a metric fuck ton of cargo in, and be able to drop off either on a planet or a moon a large, almost like a container that you would see at like a shipping yard, have four or five of them in the center. That's, that's why it's got like the beam look in the center. So we were going to have pistons come down from it and, uh, you know, be able to drop it and you know, land and everything like that. And the secondary part of it was if one of our ships had irreparable damage on the spot, we could go get it with this uh, using, you know, landing gear or merge blocks or whatever, put it in the center, and then either fly it all the way back to where we're going or use a jump drive to get it to wherever we need to go out of harm's way and do repairs. So it was supposed to have its own onboard cargo area for you know, parts that we needed for repair. So it would have no refineries or assemblies, but just cargo for itself. Um, so things have kind of changed. Now, I, you know, after testing it on a planet and the moon to move the, the battleship I have named Charleston, which is like the very first Space Engineers major project I've ever started working on and still working on to this day. And it's a year and a half old. And probably be finished whenever they actually update all the block models because it has 147 mods, I think, all in all in that one ship. Just 147 mods to make it kind of look how I wanted it. And with the new block models, hopefully, uh, it'll you know cut back on that number by a lot because there I built it at a time when I didn't know about you know basic ship layout and design, so it's absurdly huge. It's uh, 100 and five blocks long, I think, right off the top of my head, and weighs in at 11 million kilograms, and it's not done. That's empty. No ammo on board, no people, interior's not fleshed out, but it has enough crew and usable space for like 40 people, and at the time, that seemed great. You know, it's the biggest thing I've ever built, and it's going to be awesome, and bigger is always better, and sometimes bigger is not always better, and it really, really starts to lag out everything. So that was the original thought was, okay, we, we need to make this big enough to land that on a planet. So 11 million kilograms. But the problem was after putting all the weight and engines to carry 11 million kilograms, the ship that we're making in this series was five times bigger than what the West Virginia was. Just the engine cluster alone on the back to lift it all was bigger than the West Virginia. So I omitted all that from this. Uh, from the backbone of the ship is all its own deal now. So we're going to start fresh there. And you're going to start seeing in the next one, I've already got the footage recorded for it. What we're doing now is making, I guess I'm going to call it a salvage ship. Something that we can go with to a, you know, uh, a pirate ship that we've shot in space. And we're going to go and be able to grab it and then deconstruct it on the spot. And while, you know, the simple thing would be to hop out with a grinder or make a big grinder pit underneath of it and pull it all up into itself, I kind of wanted to go hard. So I'm in another creative file right now making almost like excavator arms with small parts that we can graft onto a large grid using, you know, the rotors and everything like that that will have, uh, well pistons and rotors, so it's probably going to blow up a time or three, or every time we start it up, one of the two, and be able to swing two of these down, one on either side, and be able to start grinding away at this, and the ship's kind of still, it's very large, it's still a hundred blocks from the rear of what I'm going to call the bridge area to the front of the engineering and engine area, is a hundred blocks, so we're going to have two of these be able to swing in, go down, and kind of, you know, do all the grunt work for us. So we've also got uh, 
plans, I've got it all drawn out, for a small hangar and maintenance bay with only one refinery, one assembler, and, you know, necessary things to make small bits that we can do repairs with ourselves. I don't want this to be a survival ship where we have 50 refineries and, you know, 200 assemblers and go overboard. No, I just need a small, a small maintenance craft that we can take and repair, you know, do like an off off ship repair so you just throw all your stuff in the small away ship so we've got a hangar we have to design all the way for that a uh, small maintenance bay the main engine assemblies we have to make all of that um, yeah there's just a lot to do so uh, this is more talking than I normally do but I thought I would try to fill in the gaps on you know where we are with this what we're trying to do and where I want to go with it because I, I do want to finish this out, so I gotta have like an end goal. So hopefully Clang's kind, and we can have something nice at the end. So, uh, yeah, I think there'll be about seven minutes left of this video after uh, I get done jabbing my jaw here. So enjoy the music, and we'll see you in the next one.